Hello and welcome to Everyday Mystic, an aid to your spiritual growth. I would like to begin by saying that what Howarwas puts at the forefront of Christian life is something that I wholeheartedly agree with. Before I move on, I just want to say, forgive me for this long introduction, but there is a point to it, and I hope that it in itself will provide some value. While I don't regard beliefs or doctrines as unimportant, since, without a correct map of the terrain, it's hard to know where you're going, I recognize that too much emphasis on these things may bring one away from the teachings of Jesus and the example that he sat. Furthermore, I find that many adhere to a set of beliefs and doctrines simply because they believe that they will get punished if they don't, and rewarded if they do. This kind of thinking, I believe, is not virtuous in the least. I believe that we need to place ourselves somewhere in the middle. If we believe that we are the sole arbiters of truth, and think that there is no merit to the beliefs and values that have stood the test of time for millennia, this is the height of pride and arrogance. With this kind of mindset, I believe that where we think that we are going to find freedom of thought, we will instead find a confused mess, as there are so many forces beyond our control that influence us. We may also, after a while, find that clear, coherent thinking isn't so easy as it seems on the surface. But if we are clever enough, we might create a rather impressive system to justify something that, at its core, is nothing more than our own wishful thinking, based rather on our, often unconscious, wants, wishes, desires and neuroses. If we're really clever, we might even get other people to adhere to our belief system. If we, on the other hand, decide to adopt a set of doctrines without sufficient reason, we get locked into a very narrow view of the world. We start to filter information through this belief system, sorting out anything that contradicts or challenges it. This makes sure that the belief system stays in place and gets strengthened. It also makes sure that whatever we might need to learn and understand that doesn't conform to the belief system gets ignored. Where am I going with this? Well, throughout my later years, I've found more and more evidence that there is something with Christianity that sets it apart from other religions. It's way beyond the scope of this video to get into detail about this. But suffice it to say, that I believe that I've found sufficient reason to believe that, in some sense, what the Bible says is true. But it would be intellectually dishonest of me to assume that I know what exactly these truths mean, or to say that I can stand behind all of these supposed truths with absolute certainty. Some of my beliefs are based on a leap of faith, because I know so many other things to be true, that are contingent upon the things that I have yet to say for sure. One such thing that I believe that I can be as certain of as anyone ever can be, is that Jesus is the only person in history that lived a fully divine life, and thereby fully embodying what it means to be made in the image of God. Which brings us to the actual topic of this video, Christian character development and the moral teachings that are associated with such a character development. Which brings us to Stanley Hauerwas and what he considers to be the central focus of a Christian life. Hauerwas argues that Christianity is not merely a set of beliefs or doctrines but rather a way of life. He suggests that being a Christian involves embodying Christ-like virtues, thus influencing one's actions and decisions. In this view, we are not passive recipients of a moral code, but active participants in a lifelong process of character development. He emphasizes the role of community in this process, suggesting that it is through living in harmony with others, practicing virtues such as patience, kindness, and humility, that one's character is shaped. Therefore, the question we face is not merely what should I do, but more importantly, what kind individual do I aspire to become? This is a question that should not be taken lightly. Ask yourself this, how clear is your image of who you aspire to be? What character traits, virtues and attitudes does this future you have? The perspective of character development over time resonates with the psychological principle of neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to rewire and adapt itself based on experiences. One's repetitive actions, decisions, and thoughts can lead to the formation of new neural pathways, thus physically reshaping the brain. What is noteworthy is that our brains can change throughout our lifespan, highlighting the idea that one can continuously strive for personal growth and character development. When you repeat a certain action or decision, your brain undergoes a transformation. Neuroscientists refer to this as neurons that fire together, wire together. 
This principle, known as Hebb's Law, is the basis for how we form habits and how our characters are shaped. A virtuous action, when repeated, strengthens the neural pathways associated with that behavior, making it more likely to be repeated in the future. We find an intriguing parallel in Hauer's emphasis on habitual practice of virtues. He asserts that character is not a fixed trait but rather a dynamic entity, honed by our continual striving to live virtuously. When you make the decision to act with kindness, for instance, and repeat this decision consistently, you gradually foster a disposition towards kindness. This transformation, this reshaping of your character, is akin to the neural restructuring that occurs within your brain. In this way, we can view our brains as the physical manifestation of our spiritual journey. Every virtuous decision that we make, every act of kindness or moment of patience, becomes etched into the very fabric of our brains, reinforcing our moral inclinations. However, this journey of character development is not solitary, it is deeply embedded within our relationships with others. We cannot develop virtues in isolation, nor can we become virtuous by sheer willpower. Virtues are developed in the context of community, through our interactions and relationships. As Howard observes, the Christian community, or any moral community, serves as a nurturing ground for character development. Let's consider patience, a virtue that extols the individual by both psychological and spiritual traditions. To cultivate patience, one needs circumstances that test patience. Therefore, you need others, you need community, and you even need circumstances that you regard as unwanted. Through continual engagement with situations that challenge your patience, both your character and your brain adapt. Your neural networks reconfigure themselves to embody this virtue, reflecting your spiritual growth. In summary, the journey towards a virtuous character, as seen through the lens of Hauer's Christian ethics and contemporary neuroscience, is an ongoing, dynamic process. It is about consistently making better decisions that align with the virtues we wish to cultivate. This transformative process is not only mirrored in the neuroplasticity of our brains, but also fostered by our shared existence within communities. Both Hauer's spiritual teachings and neuroscience implore us to view character development as an active, ongoing pursuit. In this journey, we do not strive for perfection, but for growth. We do not seek to avoid mistakes, but to learn from them. We train ourselves to not complain about unwanted situations but instead we learn to see them as opportunities for growth. And we do not journey alone, but together. In this journey, each decision that we make, every virtuous action that we perform, reshapes our brains and hones our character. This, indeed, is the synergy of spirituality, religion, psychology, and neuroscience. That's all for today. If you liked the video, hit the like button, as this helps the video to get noticed. Also, feel free to share it on social media and other places. And if you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel. I put up content every day, and I do my best to always offer something valuable. Also, check out the description and comment section for more things that me and my wife are doing. Thank you for your time.